The cutting edge in music, what's new is old. Imagine beloved performers of the past brought back for an encore. Our cover story is reported by David Pogue. Many opera fans consider Maria Callas as who ever lived. When she died in 1977, they were heartbroken. So they might be shocked to learn that Maria Callas is going on tour this spring, complete with a live 60-piece orchestra. Her return is brought to you by Hologram, or what's being called a hologram. We're, we're celebrating iconic performers and their performances, uh, and we're presenting them to audiences to either see them again or audiences that have never seen them before. Brian Becker is the CEO of Bass Entertainment, which created the Maria Callas Show. Most of us think of a hologram as a three-dimensional, futuristic projection technology, like, like Princess Leia in the first Star Wars movie. You could walk all the way around her, see her from the back. Right. That's not quite what we're talking about. No, no, this is more, this is a, a 3D illusion. Uh, but holographic technology or hologram is just a, uh, a good name that people recognize. Maria Callas is hardly the first dead musician to take the stage again. The first example that really caught the public's attention was at the Coachella Music Festival in 2012, when rapper Tupac Shakur rose from the dead. The projection technology for that stunt is now owned by a company called Hologram USA. Hologram Alki David is the CEO of Hologram USA, a billionaire and no stranger to controversy. At his theater on Hollywood Boulevard, his company offers holographic shows featuring stars like Billie Holiday. As it turns out, high-tech shows aren't really new. They're based on a stage effect called Pepper's Ghost, an illusion popularized in 1862 by a scientist named John Pepper. An offstage actor is reflected by a sheet of glass at a 45 degree angle, appearing to the audience as a ghostly life-sized image. Projectors are up there, bouncing off uh, a, a gray cinema screen that's nestled to the floor, and the image is reflected up, it's reflected off a 45 degree angle. Yeah, I can just barely see this 45 degree diagonal yeah. clear sheet of plastic. Good kitty. Brings a whole new meaning to the, the show Cats. <laughs> but how do they get the video of the dead performers in the first place? Especially of Maria Callas, who died well before the age of high definition video. Marty Tudor, head of Base Entertainment's Hologram Projects, had to recreate her from scratch. And so we start with a body double um, who has to perform, literally. And our director worked with our, our body double for 12 weeks. And then we take the results of that and go to work on it digitally. Just as in the movies, special effects artists then seamlessly superimpose a computer-generated face onto the footage of the body double. And what about the audio? In Maria Callas' day, the orchestra and the singer were recorded all at once in one pass. But in this concert, the pre-recorded callus will be accompanied by a live orchestra, which means that the company's engineers had to somehow remove the sound of the orchestra from the 1960 recordings. Okay, how? It's magic. <laughs> no, it's software. <laughs> it's but it's software, mean... <laughs> and it's and it's technology, and and it's artistry. Frankly, time-consuming, expensive, tedious job, <laughs> but worth it. Bass Entertainment is also launching a Roy Orbison concert this spring, using the same techniques. 
for those of us of a certain age, those artists are all passing. So the idea that we can relive and recapture some of our youth, I think that's what's really drawing people to it. Todd Richmond is the director of the Mixed Reality Lab at the University of Southern California. He spends a lot of time thinking about technology and art. Pretty soon you'll be able to have performances for the songs you don't have footage for, and you can have them singing songs that they never sang before. Someday, not only could you have Tupac singing opera, but you could have Maria Callas singing hip-hop. Absolutely. As though that's not boggling enough, one of the most popular singers in Japan today is Hatsune Miku. She's a computer-generated voice coming from a computer-generated body. She opened for Lady Gaga on one of her tours. The singing is all computer-generated based on these algorithms. Audiences are paying to see a pop star who doesn't exist. Absolutely. Concerts really these days exist not so much, I would argue, for the music, but more just the scene. Actually, Alki David says that holographic singers are only the beginning. We did the world's biggest election in India for Narendra Modi. Modi was running for... We had uh, 150 mobile units uh, traveling India, and in 30 days, uh, Mr. Modi was able to canvass the country four times within a month. By hologram? By live hologram on a daily basis. He won with a landslide majority of like 67, 68 percent, yeah? Whoa, well, wait a minute. We're, we're talking about holograms changing the course of history now. Sure, absolutely. Politics. Yeah. Alki David hopes to open 150 hologram theaters across the United States. And base CEO Brian Becker says that ticket sales for the Maria Callas and Roy Orbison tours are going well. I had to escape, the city was sticky and cruel. Maybe audiences will be convinced by the illusion, or maybe they'll see right through it. But for the present, dead performers from the past are the future of live performance. The taste your sweet kisses, your arms open wide, the fever for you.